Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two for these news bulletins today, August 13th, 2012. The links will be posted in YouTube's video description and YouTube channels are ddarko2012-2013 along with ggnonline.com if you'd like to help me out and donate through PayPal. I appreciate all the people that do donate. Some people even donate wireless routers with firewalls on them and that helps. Uh, another person just volunteered to uh, donate some organ, organ uh, energy, I guess, so, and I appreciate that very much. And there's one person who usually donates, and they've actually donated uh, uh, different types of organic tobacco that you can grow on your own, so. Okay, I'm going to finish up with um, just what I had left on the last video, which is the Middle East news and the Venezuela news, and then I'll bust into the economy, their rigged economy, and its effects. West celebrates as Dark Age descends over Egypt. Morzai of the Muslim Brotherhood begins rounding up outspoken journalists as Egypt al arise or aligns itself with West against Syria and Iran. The U.S. State Department's Voice of America boldly proclaim Egyptian media military shakeup revolutionary, airing proclamations from the Egyptian Muslim Brotherhood that Egyptians have been dreaming of a fair democratic system for more than 60 years. I guess the authors say it is unlikely that Egyptians have been dreaming of an end to their secular system of governance or dreaming of a sectarian extremist political party coming to power, notorious for thuggery, violence, and for being a stalwart pillar of Western mechanizations. It says here this, Mohammed Morzai, hardly a hardline extremist himself, is the embodiment of absolute fraud that is the Muslim Brotherhood, a leadership of Western educated, Western serving technocrats posing as pious Muslims attempting to cultivate a base of fanatical extremists prepared to intimidate through violence the Brotherhood's opposition. It says here, failing that, they are prepared to use and have used extreme violence to achieve their political agenda. And the recent events in the Sinai area, uh, basically, I cover this in an article that. Uh, that Egypt is now basically aligning itself with Israel, so with that leadership. It says here, India sounds high alert along Pakistan border. India has sounded high alert along its border with Pakistan as well as a disputed region of Jammu and Kashmir as part of a stepped up security measures for the country's Independence Day celebrations. India is celebrating its Independence Day on the 15th of August, just a day after uh, Pakistan does on the 14th of August. So a senior Indian officer said militants are staged along the border line to infiltrate and to the side. The firing and ceasefire violations are aimed at pushing in militants to the side, but our troops are alert and foiling their designs. This is just another source that I came across. Um, what was the art? Yeah, from dailybosker.com. Indian Army gets battle ready on the border. So kind of reading into this article, it kind of makes it seem that uh, India is uh, not posturing but they're opening up this big military base and that they're uh they're yeah they're creating a modern military station they're modernizing the military yeah because it says its proximity proximity to the international border of india and pakistan has got their army to reap benefits of the location for securing the nations against any foreign aggression in the future so they've already sent units uh, to this area and it says here it indicates that the Indian Army has big plans for this area So I guess another way to look at this is be prepared for uh, um, Some kind of India bombing or Pakistan bombing. It's going to be usually intelligence uh, Operated here. We'll make the font a little bigger there. So Chavez American man detained in Venezuela The authorities have detained an American man and are interrogating him suspecting he could be a mercenary Plotting to destabilize the country if the opposition loses the upcoming presidential election so Chavez told reporters Friday that under questioning, the man said he is, or he has been a U.S. Marine. The man has military training and refuses to give information that in itself is suspicious, Chavez said on state television. So the man had been uh, reportedly detained while crossing into Venezuela from Colombia on a bus in the middle of the night. He said the American had entered the country illegally. So the interesting part is... Uh, it says he was carrying a U.S. passport with entrance and exit stamps from countries including Iraq, Afghanistan, and Libya. So when he was detained at the National Guard post in southwestern Tachira, whatever, Tachira state, he tore up a part of a notebook that he had with him. And Venezuela is planning a guerrilla army against U.S. invasion. They said here that they're aiming to be a million strong by 2013 to fight off a possible U.S. invasion, an opposition lawmaker said Sunday. Wow, an opposition lawmaker said Sunday. So, 
but it says it's crafted with input from close ally and fellow U.S. foe. Cuba covers illegal and other types of angles to transform a professional army into a guerrilla army. It says here the former presidential candidate said he or she had obtained a copy of the plan printed by an institution affiliated with the army. It says here the objective is to build a new Bolivarian military doctrine that would prepare Venezuela to be successful in a prolonged popular war against the empire or United States. So she says here that it provides for strengthening the guerrilla forces at the expense of the regular army. So uh, take this with a grain of salt. So this is the opposition here. Uh, but it says here Venezuela's militia corps described by, it says here, firebrand leftist Hugo Chavez as an army of the public was created in 2005 to protect the country against possible imperialist aggression. They're considered a part of the military but report directly to the president. Kind of sounds like the Waffen SS, you know. And when you think about it, uh, most of the battles that were lost, and uh, as far as the Germans go, were done by the regular army ge generals that lost. And when the Waffen SS were uh, running on their own, uh, they usually won. So you know, when it all said and done, there is there could be actual people's army, and then there could be the regular army that answers to basically um, how do you put it outside interest. And speaking of the army and military soldiers and stuff like that, U.S. Army super soldier genetically modified humans won't need food or sleep. So the frontier of genetic modifications is not centered around a certain fruit or vegetable, but humans, more specifically military personnel. So these uh, GMO humans is the next venture for biotechnology companies working with the United States military with the admitted goal of producing a super soldier that does not require food or sleep to perform Olympic-style physical feats. And if you've ever seen that uh, d uh, thing with D uh, Duncan Ophinian, the Super Soldier program, I think it was Project Talon and MK Ultra, they've been doing this for, <laughs> for shit at least 30, 40, 50. You know, if it's World War II, we're talking about you know 60 plus years. So this isn't anything new. Uh, they're just tying new technology in with it. So it says here that these super soldiers will be able to even regrow limbs that were destroyed by enemy fire and live off their fat stores for extreme lengths of time. It's backed by $2 billion a year funding from DARPA. And it says here that uh, they didn't say whether or not the genetically modified humans currently exist to such an extent. However, it's known based on previous reports that human chimeras have already been created outside the public spotlight. As of right now, DARPA has a functioning exoskeleton that enables soldiers to run faster and handle heavy weights. And they're, all, they're actually um, the first part of the four-part steps uh, that I've shown before, I think it was from the Russians, about uh, going to an avatar, completely over to an avatar. And so it's always for military purposes at first. And the first one, they already have that technology where um, soldiers can communicate with their um, avatar or basically remote, uh, robots remotely in that. DARPA earlier this year was developing research into contact lenses mounted displays that could transport information from drones in the eyeballs of soldiers. Furthermore, the agency is also developing helmets in which the soldiers could communicate telepathically uh, with the kill drones. I would imagine that's for people on the kill list. Okay, yeah, the 2045 project. Um, which promises or offers immortality to the wealthy elite. So, yeah, this is what I was talking about. I'm going to keep moving here for time's sake, guys. Check it out. But this ties in with what? Wayne Matson's uh, reporter story about what? James Holmes, family tied to DARPA and mind manipulation work. So we know that Holmes was in a very special, unique program uh, as far as neuroscience goes, and uh, creating super soldiers is really what it was all about. So, yeah, basically his... Um, his experience or his research and history uh, was basically tied to the Salk Institute, which was partnered with DARPA and all these universities. And it says here they're working with the Mars Company, basically chocolate, to prevent in-combat troops through the enhanced use of epa something to China, a blood flow increasing and blood vessel dilating antioxidant flavanol found in cocoa and particularly in dark chocolate. The research was part of a larger DARPA program known as Peak Soldier Performance Program which involved creating brain machine interfaces for battlefield use including human robotic bionics for legs, arms, and eyes. So yeah, it says here it was at the forefront of DARPA research on the use of brain connected neuro prosthetic lens for soldiers uh, amputate or paralyze in combat. So then we're talking about limbs growing back. It's kind of not the same thing, but it's, we're talking about the same area. The links between the younger and elder homes and the U.S. government research on creating super soldiers, human brain, machine interfaces, and human-like robots begs the question, was James Holmes engaged in a real-life Jason Bourne Treadstone project that broke down and resulted in deadly consequences in Aurora, Colorado? 
So many of you are aware of this, dozens of underwater drones deployed to the waters of Iran and um, the crash with the oil tanker that I talked about before. U.S. Porter Navy ship crashes with oil tanker near the Strait of Hormuz. And what does this do? Well, it increases oil prices. But someone, uh, a listener, uh, notified me of this news. Oil refinery explosion wakes sleeping Tulsa, Oklahoma residents. Fire contained no injuries. So, and this is, um, what, August 2nd. Then um, we have this. Uh, refinery fire makes California gas prices explode. So the fire at Chevron Coors oil, oil refinery is having an immediate impact on spot prices. So I... Me personally, I think that some of this stuff is being done purposely because, like I said in the beginning of the video, this is a totally rigged market. So they'll do things like this just to jack up oil prices because they're not getting what they want. What they want because they're little babies, right? Um, they're trying to slap all the sanctions on Iran and they're not working. Uh, India and other countries in Asia and Japan, they're all still dealing with Iran with the oil. So they're actually circumventing all of those sanctions still. And they probably don't like that. And remember what I was talking about before, a month ago, when I said when they set these more sanctions and oil embargoes that it's going to actually, um, Iran's going to actually, uh, like, basically undercut. They're going to undercut um, the oil, the oil prices that go to Europe and stuff like that. So the price will actually go down eventually. So I think the prices now are completely fabricated as if they weren't already. So it's here. Um, but this ties into what? O officials warn San Juan and California electricity scarce this summer. So again, this is in California. Electricity scarce this summer. And then we have water shortages as well. Then we have this from Iran. Bankster death penalty. Iran sentenced four bankers to hang for $2.6 billion fraud. Meanwhile, Jamie Dimon and Lloyd Blankenfein are still safe in the Israeli proxy known as the Corporation of the United States of America. Hang the bankers, Bernanke, Paulson, Geithner, Rubin, Corzine, Diamond, Blankfein are all safe for now, but perhaps if we move to Wall Street de to downtown Tehran, it'd be a different story, I guess. And then I tried finding this article and it won't come up. Uh, U.S. not seeking Goldman charges. So there's the news. The U.S. is not seeking charges against Goldman Sachs. So for, uh, I guess, basically for the mortgage fraud. A United Church of Canada debates boycott of Israeli goods. This is uh, news. It says here the working group of the United Church of Canada it says here they submitted in May a 26-page report regarding the boycott of Israeli products to the General Council of the Church. The report proposes the boycott of commodities produced by the Zionist regime in the occupied territories like the West Bank and East Quds and also draws a parallel between the Zionist regime's actions against Palestinians with the Holocaust. But they weren't the only ones. Remember from May 2012 when I report on this American Methodist vote, the American Meth Methodist vote against divesting from Israel. So two-thirds of the 1,000 delegates voted, I guess this was back then in Florida, against a motion to divest from Caterpillar, Motorola, and HP. The divestment advocates claim that the products uh, manufactured by these companies are used to repress Palestinians. Bankster fraud has driven 100 million people into poverty, killing many. It says we are witnessing a financial holocaust brought on by the banksters, which is causing many deaths. We know fraud is the business model adopted by these giant banks. It says here the World Bank notes that the financial crisis, the one that was basically caused by financial fraud, has driven between 64 and 100 million people into destitution. The estimate's probably a lot higher. In 2009, they estimated that 140 million people would be driven into poverty in Asia alone. The AP reported in 2009 the global financial crisis has pushed the ranks of the hungry to a record 1 billion people. It says here a Florida man says he was fired for daughter's cancer treatment, saying that he was terminated on a pretext because his late daughter's cancer treatments were too expensive. But Wells Fargo says, go F yourself. Are the government and the big banks quietly preparing for imminent financial collapse? Some people are asking that question. It says here... Investors are preparing for a euro collapse. That's right. Banks, companies, and investors are preparing themselves for a collapse of the euro. U.S. banks are told to make plans for preventing collapse. The regulators directed five of the country's biggest scammers to basically develop a plan for staving off a collapse if they face serious problems, emphasizing that the banks could not count on government help. They're talking about living wills, and this goes back to June 27th, on which will basically allow the banks to screw you even more. So that's why people are warning to get your money out. All legal bank deposit protections are now officially gone. Federal courts explicitly rule banks can steal your deposits to pay down their uh, debt, and you have no legal recourse if the bank fails. And that's why what? DHS is purchasing another 750 million rounds of ammo, preparing for mass civil unrest. And with this...
And with the recent drought, there's going to be uh, less food. So the government stepped in, paid $170 million in food uh, for farmers to give them quick cash, which will go to the Department of Defense.